Well, as we told you earlier, State Superintendent Glenda Ritz is pressing ahead with a lawsuit against the members of Indiana's top education panel. It's the latest escalation in the tensions between Ritz and a panel she actually chairs the State Board of Education. We now go to our State Impact Education team who has been following the case. How did things get so bad, Kyle? It's, it's really hard to pinpoint, Joe, but it's not like relations have ever actually been good. On the face of it, Ritz's lawsuit is about state board members allegedly violating Indiana's open meetings law, but not far beneath the surface. The state school policy watchers say this is a fight over who controls education policy in Indiana. The tensions have been evident since Ritz's election. She's the first Democrat to win the state's top education post in almost four decades. But members of the state board were all appointed by G. GOP governors. The meetings have been tense, especially lately after Governor Mike Pence announced the creation of a new agency to oversee the state board and its budget. Pence officials say the state board needs it. The panel's always been setting the state's education policy goals, but in recent history, Ritz's Department of Education has controlled the budget. Many of the board members who worked well with Ritz's predecessor, former state superintendent Tony Bennett, have criticized the current state superintendent for working too slowly to address key issues. Issues. But Ritz says the board isn't doing enough to communicate with her, which brings us to the lawsuit that Ritz filed this week. She says they went behind her back in drafting a letter to an outside legislative agency to assume a role in calculating the A through F letter grades for schools. That would violate state laws requiring public bodies to make official decisions in public meetings. Board members deny that. They say there was no secret meeting and that the letter in question was written via email. An expert on the state's open door law says emails don't count as meetings under the rules, but he doesn't have all the facts. If there was a series of meetings or if there was a meeting involving these 10 uh, Board of Education members and then from that meeting this letter uh, uh, came from, well, then you very well could have a violation. If it was all done by email, it's pretty cut and dried. There was no violation of the letter of the law. Now, some people might argue that it kind of gets away from the spirit of the law. Now, as you heard earlier in the show, Attorney General Greg Zeller has moved to block Ritz's lawsuit from ever making it to court. He says he isn't taking sides in the dispute between Ritz and the state board, but Zeller says the Attorney General is the only office that can file or defend lawsuits on behalf of the state. Now, Ritz says she's open to resolving the matter out of court, but she has to take a stand. At least one state board member has also filed a suit of his own, a motion for the suit to be thrown out of court. And the Lafayette Journal and Courier's editorial board took both sides to task, writing, they wrote, quote, there's a little reason for Hoosiers to believe things will ever get better in the relationship between Glenda Ritz and just about everyone else at the State House." end quote. One more story besides state board squabbles you can take a look at on our website, stateimpactindiana.org right now. One chart that describes Indiana's creeping poverty problem, as you can see from this chart, that's the uh, level of students who are living in poverty that are attending Indiana schools as measured by the free and reduced price lunch numbers. You can see this orange line here uh, represents what the percentage of those students uh, relative to the overall enrollment in Indiana schools. So very close to a majority of students receiving free or reduced price lunches in Indiana schools. It's a very interesting trend and it's taking place across the nation. Joe, you can look at this trend on our website, stateimpactindiana.org. Okay,